the SEC has been hostile to crypto ever since, well, really under Clayton and now, of course, under Gensler. That hostility is nothing new. So mm -hmm. it's not entirely surprising that they're going after cracking and, and staking. I would say the intensification is evident from the SEC in terms of their oversight. I believe that they feel emboldened that they have more of a political mandate now to go after crypto post 2022 and the FTX collapse. So I think the same undercurrent trends are driving the SEC's action and the action of the Fed, FDIC, OCC, which is feeling politically emboldened due to a lot of people are sympathetic with attempts to ring funds through crypto space in the US after the collapses of last year. And also Congress being deadlocked. That's an important thing that I think people are not talking about is the prospects for legislation here of any sort are very minimal going forwards for the next two years. I don't think we'll see anything pertaining to crypto, actually, believe it or not, even though the House is, is somewhat favorable. Mm -hmm. So the agencies realize nothing's going to come out of Congress. Nothing's going to be done that way. They're going to be stymied let's say the Biden administration had a crypto, pa crypto package, they wanted to push it. They wouldn't be able to do that with the House. So now a lot of folks in the executive branch are saying to themselves, well, it's on us to regulate, effectively legislate through regulation. Yeah. And that is absolutely what we're seeing at the yeah. SEC. They're interpreting their mandate in a very broad way, as is the Fed. The Fed is now growing their mandate. Um, there's a little, there's some wonkish details in the, January 27 um, chain of events, which I mean, are probably worth digging into. But yeah, I think that's what we're seeing really is this understanding in Washington. Now Congress is deadlocked. Okay, it's on us, the regulators to do something. Can I ask, um, you know, with something like FTX, clearly, you know, uh, kind of the crypto winter kind of sets the stage for more regulation, because you have a lot of people who are probably going, you know, either grousing to their congressmen or you know, there's a sense like, OK, you know, we lost this huge percentage of whatever we had invested in crypto for whatever reason. And we're kind of pissed about that. Uh, this, you know, happened, uh, you know, after the uh, the tech bubble burst. You know, there's new stock markets up the housing bubble burst. You know, there's new regulations um, with FTX <clears throat> um, really puts gas on all of that. Can I ask you, was is there something the crypto community should have been doing? to kind of unmask or expose or pull, get people to stop putting money into FTX ahead of time? Or is there anything like that? Is there, you know, what if, if broadly speaking, crypto is going to be something that is independent of government and independent of regulation, not, not independent of risk, but like, is there something that people in the crypto space should have or could have been doing more of to unmask, like to squeeze out the, the SBFs of the world before they get to a point where they really threaten everybody who's acting, you know, in, in a positive way. Absolutely. Without a doubt. There's three things specifically. One is the investors need to be better with their diligence. Quite mm -hmm. Today, a lawsuit dropped against Sequoia and Paradigm, the lead investors in that FTX deal, alleging that they failed in their diligence. And in fact, they sort of endorsed FTX and caused people to trust it wrongly. I'm sympathetic to that. Frankly, I'm a VC. We didn't invest in FTX because they were right. an offshore brokerage. We looked at the early rounds. I have those pitch decks. Yeah. Because they were an offshore brokerage. And we thought there was no way they could come onshore legally. They had the FTT token, which we thought was an unregistered security, which would cause them problems down the road. And they had Alameda trading on the exchange. I was looking back at my old email trail from LPs. Why didn't you invest in FTX? You got the look. What are you doing? You missed this huge deal. We told them exactly that. There's no way an exchange in the US would be able to have a proprietary trading firm owned by the same entity trading exclusively on the exchange. Right. That would not be allowed. And, so, and I guess it's worth hammering home the fact that, you know, FTX was was exposed at a moment when a company that was going thinking about buying it said, hey, you know what, we're not going to do this because we don't trust it. I mean, the yeah. market on, on some profound level, the market worked to expose a bad company. But so, like, what, what do you like, think? What do you think happened there? Because the, you know, there's presumably some pretty smart people at Sequoia and these other big investors. Why did they miss what you were seeing pretty clearly? Different uh, approach to risk tolerance, um, mm -hmm. and also um, 
they the deal dynamics i mean in 2021 remember hottest time venture capital history i'm sure the deal was moving extremely fast this was the fastest growing company in the industry and the hottest industry on earth for venture dollars so the power would have been totally on the side of the founders and mm -hmm. not on the side of the vc so i'm sure they understood they needed to do less diligence uh, this will come out in a court of law eventually what happened yeah. in order to win the deal and they thought that that was a worthwhile trade-off i mean it wasn't just ftx where this was the mindset among vcs it was very common back then you you know you you mentioned uh well, being... I'm sorry could you also you you had said there were three things that um the crypto uh world oh, could yeah, be doing right. and, and just to get back to those one of them was doing due diligence like investors doing due diligence do you remember the other two uh yeah so first just to summarize the first thing vcs aren't just vcs their stakeholders aren't just their lps their stakeholders are everyone and when you're investing in these exchanges that have hundreds of millions of clients globally your stakeholders everyone that uses crypto because if you fail you'll bring the regulatory hammer down which is what is happening now so vcs need to understand that um two proof of reserves it's a very obvious thing if there had been approved reserves in place which is basically a procedure whereby an exchange or custodian demonstrates that they have reserves and then they compare those to their client liabilities and they show they match that's cryptographically provable it's technically very doable quite a few exchanges do it already if ftx had done that obviously they wouldn't have been able to commit fraud right. if proof of reserves had been normalized throughout the industry FTX wouldn't have been able to do it, assuming they were in this parallel universe, they were doing fraud and they would have been sticking out like a sore thumb. So if that was normalized throughout the industry, these insolvencies, FTX, Mt. Gox, Quadriga, they would be really evident. So that is a very simple thing. I'm pushing very hard for it. You'll actually see legislation. Texas introduced a bill asking for it. I think that'll pass that will become part of the self-regulatory framework that is used in the industry. And it's a very positive thing. Unfortunately, we're too late now. And the only reason it's got so much uptake is because of FTX. The third thing is just building better decentralized exchanges such that we don't have a reliance on centralized exchanges. That's also happening. So the technological trends here are very self-regulatory as far as I can tell. Hey, thanks for watching that excerpt from our live conversation with SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce and crypto investor and writer Nick Carter about the government's escalating crackdown on cryptocurrency exchanges like Kraken and the broader DeFi economy. Join me and Nick Gillespie here every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern for more conversations like this and subscribe to Reason's YouTube channel for notifications whenever our videos go live. Thanks for watching.